Hey guys, I'm a verified educator at an academy and along with that I'm also teaching live at an academy plus to access my live classes you can take an academy plus subscription now an academy plus offers some interesting features apart from live classes which include detailed and complete explanation of a particular course then there you have problem discussion for self-evaluation you can also watch recorded version of the class in case if you miss out any live session you have regular doubt clearing sessions for doubt clearing and to clarify all your problems you also get access to the whatsapp group to clear and discuss problem among the other plus students now if you have found these features interesting and want to join an academy plus i'll recommend you to use my referral code that is n underscore huda to get 10 percent discount on the subscription fee now that's all about an academy plus let's continue with our video all right so we'll talk about this particular question in this particular video first of all and um, this question was asked for four marks in CSI June 2019 exam. It was asked from main group elements and this question was one of the question which uh, like in which student got confused a lot because uh, this was I think this was first time when it was asked in a way that there were two options which were matching with the same of it. Okay, so there was like A and B both getting matched with one and here also like in the options it was like that because you were giving uh, you were getting uh, these kind of options where two of them could be matched with one of the or one of the other on the other side okay so i'll just tell you that how you can approach these kind of questions first of all uh, all this like all the structures of different compounds of your uh, noble gas elements like especially for the xenon compounds you should know the structure of them okay and these are the two which you all must know like you all must have studied about them that is uh, xeo3 and xeof2 so xeo3 i'll just show the structure of it it has a lone pair and it has three oxygens and it has a pyramidal shape right so xco3 will be matched with this pyramidal so pyramidal one will have a c okay so c is matched with two over here now talking about xcof2 so you can do with this uh, with the help of vscpr theory also you have three bond pairs and one lone pair so the hybridization over here will be like sp3 and since you have one lone pair so that's why it's a pyramidal shape now for XCOF2 you have a structure something like this so uh, you have uh, like uh, okay so fine you have double bond O let me just make it yeah so you have double bond O you have two lone pairs in xenon and you have two fluorines like this so this was something like this and if you look upon to this you are having three bond pairs and two lone pairs so overall hybridization was like sp3d shape was uh, shape was trigonal by pyramidal right so these two were, uh, were quite easy to approach so this was for D now uh, C is matching with 2 and D is matching with 3 that is given in uh, all the three options you can see now you have to choose you should know the structure of other two okay so now before going into that uh, let me just tell you that how you can do this kind of question okay first of all uh, just look upon to the uh, to the option to the name which is given to you so xenon f means fluoride fluoride or the fluorine is directly attached to xenon then o that means this oxygen is also directly attached to xenon and when this particular whole thing is given in bracket it means that this whole thing is attached to oxygen okay that's why it is given in bracket so this this is how the name has been written okay that means with xenon you just have fluorine fluorine attached and you have oxygen attached and with oxygen you are having like os oh sorry os o2f okay so this was the group attached to this now if i talk about xenon so xenon has uh, eight electrons out of which two have been used so you have like three lone pairs over here so if i just talk about the structure of the molecule around xenon so around xenon you are having something like this you are having two bond pair and three lone pair again hybridization will be sp3d shape will be like uh, the geometry will be trigonal by pyramidal and the shape will be linear because uh, this will be on the axial position right so these bonds are actually on the axial position you, you can draw this on the like on the other way around that means you can draw the same thing in this way also that is xenon then three lone pairs like this okay and then you have uh, like fluoride then o then so2f okay so this is like that so this is how the uh, the name came out to be so this one this particular one came out to be linear so this is a 
right so a is matched with one now again you have to check for the option b so for option b again i'll just show you so same thing same goes for here also xenon will form a single bond with fluoride over here and with nitrogen it will form a bond and with nitrogen you have this particular whole group attached to the nitrogen okay so that means it will again go like this so you have you will have xenon you will have fluorine attached to that you will have nitrogen and with nitrogen you will have so2f okay uh, sorry that was so2f whole twice so because we have to make the valency of nitrogen to be 3 because nitrogen forms maximum 3 bonds so so2f and then so2f so this is how this will go so around you just have to tell around xenon what is the geometry around xenon not you don't have to look upon to the other things okay you might get confused ki this is a very big com uh, like this this is not linear molecule right but if you just look upon just the region around xenon so around xenon this is the whole region and you can see that it's a linear molecule again the same thing hybridization is sp3d trigonal bipyramidal is the geometry and shape is linear linear over here. so again this will also go for linear so a and b both are matched with one so a and b matched with one c with two and d with three so that's how uh, the answer came out to be option number a, okay so don't get confused over here you can draw the whole same thing in uh, like in this way also let me just show you over here so you can again like you can just show this like this okay so it's it's nothing different don't get confused with the bulkiness of the group attached on the axial position it's nothing but n uh, uh, n so2 f2 hold twice okay and in the downside you have fluoride so this is how the molecule is so that that's a linear molecule okay so that's how this question has to be approached and that's how you can do this question so in future if this kind of question will be asked rely on vscpr theory and you will get the answer correctly let's go for the next question all right so we'll talk about this question now uh, this was again asked from the inorganic reactions and um, okay so it says that among the following reaction those that are feasible in liquid ammonia okay so that means they are asking that which of these reactions are feasible in liquid ammonia the first one the first reaction is given that you have potassium nitrate and it is you are treating it with sodium uh, sorry uh, with uh, silver chloride and you are getting kcl plus agno3 now this is a reaction which is very well known okay not this but the reaction which i'm telling now okay so the reaction goes like this that is you have kcl and if you treat it with agno3 uh, you get agcl and along with that you get kno3 okay so this is what you get this agcl forms a white precipitate okay this is very well known reaction and it has been already asked in csnet in previous years exams right the question was like this that kcl reacts with compound a to give a compound b which is white in precipitate and when a drop wise liquid liquid ammonia is uh, like when it is treated with drop wise liquid ammonia the white color disappears so that's what the question was uh, like the, it was a previous question but in this question the same co reaction has been used in a different way so you are treating kcl with agno3 you are getting agcl which is a white precipitate and as i told you that when you do well in the presence of liquid uh, ammonia so if you do the uh, if you put liquid ammonia to this reaction the re reaction become reverse okay so this reaction get reversed okay so this reaction get reversed get reversed in presence of in presence of liquid ammonia so that means this reaction is feasible in presence of liquid ammonia right so those who are aware of, of, about this reaction they might have done this otherwise it's it's difficult to approach this question right so this is a correct reaction which is feasible in presence of liquid ammonia now coming to the second equation here you have nh4br and it is reacting with knh2 and it is giving you kbr plus nh3 you can see that's a neutralization reaction and you can see that uh, ammonia is getting formed right so this will be the reaction which is obviously feasible in in the liquid ammonia so second is also the reaction which is feasible in liquid ammonia uh, now let's talk about the third one okay you can see that iron over here has a zero oxidation state in FeCO5 whereas over here iron has a oxidation state of minus 2 that means what is happening over here so this is the reduction reaction right so iron is getting reduced so it needs a reducing agent right so it needs a reducing agent to reduce this and you might be aware about it that liquid ammonia is a uh, like like liquid ammonia is a good reducing agent right 
so ammonia solutions of like alkali metals are behave as a good reducing agent so yeah so it, this reaction is also feasible in presence of liquid ammonia why because this is a reducing reaction for to like to provide these two electrons you need a reducing agent and that reducing agent will like this liquid ammonia will work as that reducing agent so it will provide that two electrons and this will reduce this iron to uh, SeCO4 to minus right so uh, which reactions are feasible in liquid ammonia so answer was a that means all one two and three all three reactions are feasible in liquid ammonia so that's how you can approach this question uh, you can just guess a, f a few of the things and rest you need to know you need to study you need to remember and then only you can approach this kind of question let's go to the next one so let's take this question now and uh, this was again a good question and it was really approachable question you can easily approach this one and you can just apply a common sense you are just common thinking about the molecule just the if you just know the little bit about how polymerization happens and how, what is the shape of these molecules you can easily answer this question right so let's see how it will be done it says that the synthesis of polydimethylsiloxane the chain forming branching and terminating agents are okay so they are asking that which of these agent can form a chain okay which of them can branch a, uh, branch can form a branch and which of them can act as a terminating agent now to make you guys understand let's let's uh, let's draw a hypothetical uh, polymer okay so these are the polymeric units these dots are showing you the polymeric units okay so this is a single chain let's draw some branches also okay for this polymeric chain so this will be done so let's say this is our hypothetical polymer over here now you what you can see from this uh, from this polymer that the terminating agent these two will behave as the terminating agents right so how much bonds does this terminating agent has to make so terminating agent let me just write it down so terminating agent has to make one bond okay so it should make one bond okay it has to make one bond all right so that's quite uh, understandable next go for the branching agents okay so what are branching agents so this will behave as branching agent because here you have branch again this is also the branching agent so let's talk about the branching agents okay so how much bonds does a branching agent has to make so it has to make three bonds right it has to make three bonds as you can see from here talking about the chain forming okay the chain forming agent so this one will behave as the chain forming agent so how many bonds it has to make so chain forming agent how much bond it has to make it has to make two bonds right it has to make two bonds now uh, when you have chloromethylsilane uh, in that case uh, you ha you should know that this chloride will behave as the uh, as the bonding site right the chlorine chlorine bond will break cl2 will be escaped from there and uh, like that much bonds will be formed so if you have let's say um, okay so let's say you have uh, me2 sicl2 that means you have two chlorine so that means this particular thing this particular species can form how many bonds two bonds why because it has two chloride attached to it similarly if you have me3 sicl so that means one chloride it has one chlorine so how much bond it can make it can make just one bond Similarly, if I have like MeSiCl3, so how much bonds it can make? It can make three bonds because it has three chlorine. It's very obvious, right? Chlorine, chlorine, like when the polymerization will take place, chlorine and chlorine will for, uh, form Cl2 gas and they, like there will be a bond formed between the silicon. So now you can easily understand. You can easily like, uh, you can easily like compare all these things. So which one of them will behave as the terminating agent? the one which has so from, from the static so chain forming agent so chain forming agent needs two bonds so this particular uh, like uh, this particular thing will behave as the chain forming agent okay so me2 sicl2 should be written first so me2 sicl2 me2 sicl2 me2 sicl2 so either option a b or d can be correct c is wrong answer now going for the next that is branching for for branching we need three bonds right so which one of that can form three bonds so this particular one that is mis 
MESICL3. So MESICL3 should be the next one. So MESICL3, MESICL3 are over here. Okay, so now option A is not having MESICL3. So option A is wrong. Okay, so now we have to choose between B and D. So last one is your terminating agent. So the terminating agent needs to be like, uh, okay, so your terminating agent should have uh, one bond, right? Uh, or like, yeah, terminating agent needs one bond. That means this MESICL. So ME3, sorry, ME3SICL. So ME3SICL. And over here, you don't have this. So this will not form any of the bond. This will not form polymer also. So ME4SI, tetramethylsilane will not form any uh, bond and it will not form any polymer. So option B is your correct option. D is wrong, right? So this is how you can go for this question. I hope you guys understood it well. And that's all for this video, guys. I have taken like the questions uh, which were relevant from the main group elements and I just tried to compile them over here. I also have one more part that is main group elements part one. This is the part two of this video. And I hope all the questions of four marker from main group elements are covered in these two videos from June 2019 exam. If you like this video, give it a like. If you are new to this channel, subscribe to the channel. I am trying to make videos regularly. Be with me. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.